All right, uh, my name is Meg Dehen. I am the uh, CEO of Romana Software and also the International Institute for Software Testing. Uh, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes uh, with you here to, uh, um, to uh, try to uh, help you understand the relationship between the requirements, scenarios, test cases, test sets, uh, and test scripts. I, I will I will uh, give you these terminology and concepts the way I have been teaching people around the globe for so many years. But also, uh, the, the way I will explain it is how Romana, as an integrated um, life cycle management tool, use them and supports them. All right. Um, to start with, um, we will always start with requirement. A requirement is always um, needed in order to be able to design tests. And a requirement is simply stated as a statement uh, that's describing um, uh, any, any behavior, any functionality that someone expects of the system. So, and rem uh, rem remember that a requirement can come on any level of details. Uh, obviously, the more details we have in a requirement, the easier it is for us to test, however, because we already know that requirements will never be complete and requirements will never be as testable as we want them to be. Uh, this methodology here works with a requirement on any level of detail. So a requirement can be simply um, customers shall be able to uh, place orders online or customers shall be able to uh, cancel their orders online. As you can see, this is very high level requirements. And the way we deal with high-level requirements is through the concept of uh, scenarios. And scenarios are simply what? Um, any conditions that could possibly happen in production while this requirement is being executed. So if you can imagine someone is trying to cancel an order online, what could possibly happen? Someone cancel an order, could cancel an order that does not exist. Someone could cancel an order that uh, has already been canceled before. And someone cancel an order that has not been canceled before. And someone cancel an order, cancels an order that's refundable or non-refundable. Any one of those uh, could be possibly uh, conditions that could happen in production. That's why we're going to treat, treat them as scenarios. As you can see, the relationship from requirement to scenarios is a one-to-many relationship, meaning that for each requirement, we are going to have a number of scenarios. And obviously, the more scenarios we can think about, the more scenarios we can test, and of course, the more reliable and more predictable our system is going to be. So it must always be the goal uh, of uh, the test process and, and the goal of the whole uh, project team is to come up with as many scenarios as possible. Once we have our scenarios, and and, and scenarios should be, be stated on a, in a very simple way, the way I stated those examples, then you go and move to uh, test cases. Now, test cases are the means by which we are going to test the scenarios. And again, as you can see, we have a one-to-many relationship uh, between, between scenarios and test cases, which means that for each scenario, we're going to have a number of test cases. Here's how test cases would look, look, would look like. Each test case consists of a set of input that we're going, we're going to give to the system, a set of preconditions, and preconditions are all the conditions that exist before I run the test case. And these two together will produce a set of post conditions and a set of output. So if I were to go back to my example on uh, the requirement that has to do with uh, customers canceling orders online, I can select a scenario that says, okay, customer cancels a refundable order. And the test case, one of the test cases for that scenario would be um, uh, Magdi Hanna is canceling order number 562, and that order number 562 is a refundable order and was paid by a credit card, and the credit card was uh, is still available, and that order has not been shipped. All these things I just stated are considered preconditions. So the order number is the, you know, is the input, and the preconditions are all those facts about the order number, about the order, that it has not been canceled before, it has been paid by credit card, uh, the credit card is still valid, and it has not been shipped. 
All right. So for this test case, the post conditions we expect is what? Of course, the output would be something, some sort of confirmation message that confirms that the, the order has been canceled. The post conditions would be all the kind of things we expect to happen as a result of the successful cancellation of the order. So it would be things like the order has been canceled, uh, the credit card has been credited back the correct amount, and the uh, inventory has been adjusted back to reflect that the order has been canceled. So this is how we define a test case. Now, you can imagine now, by taking one test case, all right, and changing either the input or the preconditions, you can produce other test cases that have different post conditions, different outputs. So the difference between one test case and the another and the another would be in the difference between an input or a precondition and as a result, a difference between in the, in the post condition or in the output. And this way you can create a larger number of test cases for the same scenario. Once you have a group of test cases that are similar and you know that to, those test cases could be executed using the same steps because, of course, canceling an order is canceling an order. We follow the same steps to cancel an order, regardless if the order was refundable or non-refundable, regardless if the order was paid or not paid. All right. So we follow the same steps. So once you have a group of test cases, we cluster them together into a set, a test set. So a test set is a group of, of similar test cases. Forgive me for the typo here. It's a group of similar test cases that require the same steps to be executed. So all what it is really is a clustering of test cases. So you can have 50 or 60 test cases. All of them have to do with canceling an order. And because that group of test cases require one require the same steps to be executed, we attach to the test set one test script down here. So a test script, as you can see, there's another typo here. That's a test script, not a test step. A test script, whether they are manual or automated, simply uh, now, now, forgive me, the test script here is a, a set of test steps, a set of steps, a set of steps. The typo here is an S, a missing S. So a test script is a set of steps, manual or automated, that are needed to execute a set of similar test cases, which means the test cases that are within test set. So for each test set, you have one test script, and the test script are the steps that need to be followed. So also notice the relationship, the one to many relationship from a test set to a test case, because for each, each test set uh, consists of a number of similar test cases. This is the relationship between uh, these five entities in the test design methodology that is used by the International Institute for Software Testing, IIST.org, and also by Romana. Thank you.